Good Tuesday morning, mana gatherers. So today, for the whole world, it's a day of many, many celebrations. First, today is my brother. Yes, I have a brother um, who turns 40 today. So happy birthday to my big brother. Yes, he's older and he lives in Minnesota. Um, Minneapolis, Minnesota, actually a really a suburb right outside of Minneapolis, uh, Minneapolis called Hopkins. So today, March 2nd, is my brother James Galen, named for both of our grandfathers, birthday. But today is also a day that we celebrated growing up called uh, Texas Independence Day, native Texan right here. And we celebrated that day that um, Texas adopted its Declaration of Independence. I think that was 1836. It's been so um, seared into my being and my mind. I don't really celebrate it anymore, but when I was younger, we celebrated it with a great big giant sheet cake every year in school. We came home to more cake at, um, for dinner because it was my brother's birthday. But um, also, today is Dr. Seuss's birthday, which schools now celebrate as National Read Across America Day, and it's been turned into a whole week of celebration for the famous author, Dr. Seuss. So this celebration, Dr. Seuss's birthday, is where I want to begin my morning manna. First, though, let's hear from our scripture text for us today. It is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek God's will in all that you do, and God will show you which path to take. So yesterday I said that I was led to these verses in Proverbs 3 because of the phrase in um, a book I am reading right now, um, Understanding Makes the Mind Lazy. That has stuck with me and I've pondered it over and over and still I'm pondering it. And yesterday, knowing that today is Dr. Seuss's birthday, Proverbs 3 plus this phrase, understanding makes the heart, uh, the mind lazy, led me to one of my children's favorite Dr. Seuss books called, Oh, The Thinks You Can Think. I'm not gonna read the whole book, but I wanted to just read a part of the book. So. Indulge me as we get into the world of Dr. Seuss. Oh, the things you can think. Think, think and wonder, wonder and think. How much water can 50 elephants drink? You can wonder how long is the tail of a zong. Think of light, think of bright. Think of stars in the night. Think, think a ship, think up a long trip. Go visit the viper, the viper is a vip. Think left, think right, think low, think high. Oh, thinks you can think up if you only try. Let me read that last page for you again. Think left, think right, think low. Think high. Oh, the things you can think up if you only try. This is exactly the kind of way our mind should work when we think on the things of God and seek to understand all those things of God. We are led down new thinking paths or we are... Um, or we read or we hear or we see a passage or something familiar in our Christian tradition and faith that we are super familiar with. And we begin to see and hear and read in a whole new way. So our understanding is therefore challenged. And therefore our understanding grows because we're led to think anew or to think broader and deeper. The things we can think of God are limitless. In fact, John Wesley, of course, you know, I have to mention John Wesley, not to let him be outshined by Dr. Seuss or my brother or the fact that it's Texas Independence Day. John Wesley said, when I was young, I was sure of everything. Who remembers those days? I certainly do. I was sure of everything myself. In a few years, though, John Wesley continues, having been mistaken a thousand times, I was not half so sure of most things as I was before. 
At present, John Wesley says, I am hardly sure of anything but what God has revealed to humanity. I think Wesley said with the good Dr. Seuss, Oh, thanks the things, oh, thanks you can think, oh, the things you can think. And that is exactly what the writer of Proverbs, a wisdom piece of literature, says to us too today. Do not depend on your own understanding, for we must constantly and consistently be pushing our, our understanding, be active participants in pushing our understanding to be in alignment, not with just the ways of the world or our own very limit, limited understanding, but that our things that we think and the things that we aim to understand are in alignment with God's understanding, which is far greater, far deeper and wider and far more mysterious than our finite understanding. We, as human beings, we crave the familiar, the things that we know we can hold on to. But as John Wesley says, just when you get a grasp onto something, you suddenly become unsure. But that's not a bad thing. It is a sign of our deepening, um, of deepening of our own understanding and um, allowing not and trusting, as we talked about yesterday, to let God lead us to a greater understanding beyond what we are capable of wrapping our minds around right now. For there is so much thinks we can think of God, but should we seek God in all that we think, then God will truly guide our thinking and illumine our understanding more and more and more so that we are led closer and closer and closer to comprehending, to understanding God. That all begins with admitting that we don't understand. It's kind of a circular argument, I know. But I want you to know of the depths of things you can think of God. And not to box yourself in, not to box your heart and your mind in, with imagining God to just be so little. Because God is so, so big. So, oh, the thinks you can thinks, if only you will try. Give it a try.